Hey guys, welcome to the final or the deployment section or the deployment video. We're actually going to take our app and it's it's pretty much done locally. We just need to push it to Heroku and we should be all set. Uh, you could actually even point a domain name to it and put it live on the web. So um, let's just, uh, f first thing, let's just open up a terminal and we want to go to our sites folder I'm sorry and then my Ruby blog I've done this a hundred times already uh, and let's just run the server make sure everything's all good okay so that should be good All right, that should be good. <laughs> All right, so here's our final product. Make sure everything's working. Make sure our categories are working correctly. There are no posts, news. We have some posts. Log roll works. Contact page, which we have nothing, but that's fine. Resources page, static page, um, search. Let's search for um, third, and we get the third post. So everything's working as expected, and I think we're ready to deploy. So let's open another command line. So what I want to do now is I want to push the database, um, I mean, I'm sorry, not push, I want to migrate the database on the production app, on the Heroku app. And we can do that by running uh, Heroku run rake db migrate. And this is just going to create all the tables um, and the structure that we've done since our last um, remote migration. All right, uh, looks like it ran fine. Now let's actually do a Heroku. I'm sorry, not Heroku. We want to do Git. Um, push Heroku master this will push all our files to Heroku and I we're gonna actually we should have did this before we did the migration because I don't think it went through um, because we didn't actually have the migration files on the remote server so we're just gonna run that again once this is finished <coughs> Seems slower. <clears throat> All right, so that looks good. Now let's do that um, migration command again. So now, now you can see that it actually went through, created the comments table and whatever else that um, we're missing from our last push. So now what I want to do is export our local database and then import it to Heroku. 
and we're we're actually we're, since we're on a Windows machine, we have to specify the entire the entire file path. So it's kind of annoying, but what are you gonna do? So we want to do program files um, x86. SQL 9.2 is the current version, and then bin, and then we want to do um, pg dump dot exe. FC, we want no ACL and no owner. And our host will be localhost. Um, user will be, um, I think it's Postgres. <clears throat> yeah, and then the database is my Ruby blog. And then we want to put in the file we want, which is my Ruby blog dot uh, dump. Sorry, not my Ruby blog. All right, so I want to go to my directory and I want to delete this dump file just to so there's no confusion. So when I run this, it should create a new one. Now it needs the password. That's your database password. So it created the file. Let's see what that looks like. All right. That looks good. Not good, but it'll work. All right, so now we have our dump file. Now, if you remember, we have to upload it somewhere on the internet. And I'm going to use my staging server. You can see I still have the dump file from the last time. So I'm going to upload that. All right, so now that's uploaded on my staging server. So now I can do the import, and then we do that with uh, using the PG backups add-on. Heroku PG backups, and we want to do a restore, uh, and it's a database, obviously. And then we put the the link to where I just uploaded it. Which is uh, techguystaging.com um, files and myrubyblog.dump. All right, let's see if that works. All right, so it's telling us it's it's a destructive action. So we just got to type in the name of the app. And I'm sorry if I keep just saying my Ruby blog when we're talking about the remote app because I know that yours is named something different. Um, so just put whatever you, you called your app. All right, so that looks good. So now let's cross our fingers and go to, um, again, your, your remote Heroku app name will be different than mine. It's not going to be my Ruby blog. Um, I know you know that. All right. <clears throat> and hopefully everything went all right. All right, looks good. I love when that happens. Okay, so let's go to a post. All right comment might as well try to leave a comment will be Steve and it'll be Steve at uh, gmail.com and there it is so news all right everything looks good so now we actually have a live uh, Ruby on Rails app so one thing I also want to show you is 
Uh, if you want your app to be live on Heroku and you're going to keep it there, uh, this obviously you don't really want a subdomain. Uh, so you can actually go to Heroku.com. I'm just going to show you this real quick. You can log in and go to your admin panel or whatever you want to call it uh, and go to the app. And if you go to settings, there's this area down here. Uh, this is our subdomain, myrubyblog.herokuapp.com, but let's say I want to use myrubyblog.com. I could just add that. I could type that here and add that and then I just have to um, point the, the DNS to Heroku server and the app would be, all of a sudden it would be on myrubyblog.com uh, just like that so that's something that um, you should really look into if you're planning to actually use Heroku as a host and you can click on this link here and it'll tell you exactly what to do it'll tell you exactly uh, what name servers to to put in and, and all that stuff. I'm not going to go over that now, but um, just something to think about if you if you want to use Heroku. But I mean, that's it. That's really it for the series. So you went from, I'm assuming, not knowing anything about Ruby on Rails to building a decent app. Um, if we do a review about what we've done in this series, uh, we installed Rails installer on Windows. We installed uh, Ruby and Heroku tool belt on both Windows and Linux. Um, we set up Git and Heroku and deployed before we even did any, any development. Um, in chapter two, we learned all about Ruby, uh, arrays, hashes, uh, conditionals, all that good stuff. Uh, we learned about the model view controller framework and how it's structured. Uh, we went over generating scaffold and generating different controllers and views. Um, we went over layouts, took this HTML template and turned it into a uh, Rails layout. And we went over routes and tests and just a lot of stuff, a lot of all the fundamentals of programming with Ruby on Rails and so we come to the end and I've really enjoyed making this series and I hope you learned a lot and maybe I'll see you in a different series. Thanks.